you know, a corporate agenda or something, but that's too much to send the military abroad, and people wonder why our national debt is so high. 877-532-5797. Thank you for that call, Shirley. Let's go back to the phones. I want to welcome back Alan. Alan, we went to you, and uh, you weren't there, but I'm glad you called back to the program. He's listening on Baltimore via the Internet uh, to WVON's website. Alan, welcome to Keeping It Real with Reverend Al Sharpton. You got Andre Michael Eglishon. Your thoughts today? How you doing, brother Andre? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you. Your phone yeah, is yeah, real you know, Donald Trump distorted, is but... Go ahead, let's, let's, let's try it again. Oh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, you know what we say about the consensus? The crazy car, we got an uh, African-American woman, a very attractive name, uh, uh, Marilyn Mose, but Donald Trump said she should have been uh, uh, prosecuting the police in Baltimore. I said, well, uh, that's not going to go very well. This is what we got an uh, administration that got a lot of males showing this pig. You know why I said Donald Trump came to Bill O'Reilly's uh, rescue? And said, well, he's a good old boy. You know how they did in Mayor Kelly? Now they're tired of picking on white women. Now they're picking on our sister. Al Sharp is the most powerful man in the world. You know why? I was talking to a white woman. I said, would you vote for Valerie Jim? She said, yeah, in a heartbeat. You know, our people are not advanced. And so the NACP, Ed Holden needs to be the president. But Al Sharp, when they say Al Sharp, a lot of people say, this guy means business. You know why I said this, brother Andre? Riley picked on a deceased man like Alan, I hate to do it, but your phone is so bad, man. It's all distorted. We, I think we got the gist of it. Reverend Sharpton is doing a fantastic job. And uh, Valerie Jarrett has been a great uh, asset to President Obama and to this country during her time in the White House. And, uh, you know, we got we to gotta have some respect for women in this country, regardless of what the race of the woman is. You don't do what Bill O'Reilly did in talking about Maxine Waters, talking about look like a James Brown wig. Come on, man. You know, you, 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 how dumb can you be? You know you're going to have a backlash, a firestorm, for saying a joke like that. You know, it makes you, it, it makes you look racist. It really, really does. 877-BILL-O'REILLY, 877-532-5797. Let's go back to the phones. Line 1, Ramon joining us from Philly. Listening on 900 WURD, that's the home of Solomon Jones in the morning. Ramon, welcome to Keeping It Real with Reverend Al Sharpton. You got Andre, your thoughts. All right, Andre, thank you. Uh, I wanted to call in early what good brother Charles Ellison represents the local area, Philly, brotherly love. But I wanted to talk about, in regards of the war, I, I'm a veteran, I'm, still, I'm in the military right now. So when I hear the commander-in-chief speak about going to a war, well, in, in the window, it sounds as though he wants to present a war to us. No one's presented to the fact that a few years back, he, he was against fighting Syria, where he just mentioned, it's their problem, it's their war. Me being a soldier with family, I've been there three times. And for him to say today... You've been to Syria three times? No, I haven't been to Syria, but I've oh, been okay. to Iraq, I've been in Afghanistan. All right. You know, I've been in Iraq, but I would watch them in Mosul walk over the bridges from Syria to come bomb us. And we mm. couldn't do anything. So today, hearing him say it, it'll be a short war, I've, I've heard that many times before. And then, during the campaign, he said the Muslim allies will have to prove to us that they're loyal to us, the U.S., before they would, he would allow them to fight with us. That's concerning as a soldier. Because we need allies. We don't know all those cricks and crevices as they do. That's, that's important to us. We, I feel we do have the greatest army and the biggest army, and I'm a part of it, and I'm proud of it as a black man. I'm proud of it. And that. we thank you for your service, too. And I, and, I, and I appreciate that. But when you're in battle, you need all hands on deck. So Absolutely. Think, so just to think because you might be bigger or broader, that's arrogance and ignorance. We do need those other help, the other help from other allies. So don't be so quick to say you want to put us out there because it makes you puff your chest up. There's families here. I appreciate the last commander-in-chief for not doing that because he pulled me out of Iraq after the, the second time. So he pulled me out of there, and I'm thankful for that. But I will You know, back. Ramon, uh, again, I thank you for your service, and I do... Uh, join you in admonishing the government in Washington, D.C. to be very pragmatic about our response to what took place in Syria with the bombing of those children. Don't yeah. get me wrong, I think something has to be done. 
Oh, but yeah. I think more so, the international community needs yeah. to come together and yeah. finally tell Vladimir Putin, listen, your little proxy you got there in Syria, you better tell him to knock it off. Are we going to get rid of it? The international community needs to stand up. And the United States has to take the lead in putting together that kind of coalition to put the necessary pressure on Putin and Assad to stop killing innocent children like that. It's wrong. It's a sin before God. Great call, Ramon. And they need to be very careful about putting our troops into harm's way. Let's go to line three and welcome Tony joining us from Middleton, uh, Delaware, listening to 1450 WOL. That's the home of Carl Nelson, my daddy in this business. Tony, welcome to Keeping It Real with Reverend Al Sharpton. You got it, Andre. Your thoughts? Yeah, thanks. Uh, you know, uh, something baffled me, bro. You know, you, you, you said something about uh, uh, that, you know, we're, 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 America is bleeding money. Uh, you know, we don't have money to uh, go to war. And, and Obama was pragmatic for not, you know, uh, you know, keeping his promise. Calling on more debt, that's correct. Um, that, that's, that, that just proves to me how non-objective that many call, you many, many stations on these progressive stations are. I mean, y'all just say stuff like, so y'all, y'all, y'all talking out the side of your neck. Now, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is our national debt right now? Rams. That's crazy. That's what crazy. is our national debt right now? What's that? Do you know? Of course you don't. America is the greatest debtor nation on earth. We're the greatest debtor nation on earth, yet we are the guardian of the world's reserve currency. So having that position allows us to expand our debt at a rate that other countries...